Oh, forgot my lighting. Hey everybody, I'm Swiss Milk. Welcome to this video where I'm going to be doing some Q&A and then also uh, doing a layman's explanation. So if you liked it, do show your support through either subscribing or visiting my Patreon. Thanks guys. Uh, so without further ado, um, to the, the old people, this won't be a unfamiliar setup to you, but for the new people, it might be a little bit surprised at what I'm about to do here. So just hold on with me one second. I'm gonna be wearing a heart rate monitor while we do this Q and A, and I'm also going to be playing some Arena Commander. Um, so for the old guys, you'll know that I'm a pretty big competitive gamer. And uh, when I was playing Insurgency, one of the things that was kind of my hallmark is that I would show you what my heart rate was um, during the whole thing. So you can see during the at the bottom of the screen right now, you've got a little display going on. Uh, the left side is a constant readout of my heart rate. The right side is a long-term readout. So I'm just checking my pulse right now. It, it looks kind of good, but you know, I like it to be uh, pretty strong if I can. Oh, there we go. All right, that is looking good. Okay, so we got a steady heart rate there um, and we're gonna keep that going this whole time. So uh, let's get into this. Eric Williams asks, the intake on the top should pass through, but it's closed off in these simulations. I think it should split the 2D geometry in two pieces like you have the airfoil cross section. Uh, modeled unconnected. Yeah, so Eric, that is a great point, and I did account for that. If you notice in my original geometry, there was uh, a split in between the two halves where I was going to try to let some airflow through. And, uh, and you know, the, the geometry, the interior geometry there, it just really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do when I ran my first couple of cases. So I actually defined a boundary condition there to let the pressure that built up by the intakes kind of disappear through how I def defined the simulation. So it was accounted for, but it could be accounted for a little bit better because I'm not exactly looking at how much mass flow I have there. But yeah, I think what I did was a pretty good representation of how the M50's intakes would work. So Darjanator asks, how come I didn't extract the 3D model uh, from the game or the hollow view? So I did try to do that originally, uh, but what happens is that the hollow viewer is a uh, is an STL file and because it's an STL file the geometry is a bunch of different triangles so just a crap load of triangles so uh, originally I thought that was gonna work no problem but when I was importing everything into SolidWorks I noticed that uh, I could only import 20,000 triangles at once to because I had to take an STL and I had to turn it to a, a dot IGS or a dot step <laughs> that was a quick match. Um, but essentially TLDR, the reason I didn't extract it is because the models in the hollow view are not closed shells. There's lots of gaps in them. They're very early renditions of the type of geometry that we see in game now. So the reason I didn't use it is because they, they weren't closed, so they wouldn't work for the simulation and 3D simulation. Uh, and there's just too many triangles there, especially with the intakes and lots of little detail parts that don't matter for aerodynamic. One of the things I will be needing to do 3D models of everything is a low level of detail 3D mesh. And now that Star Citizen uh, Cloud Imperium Games is starting to work on their low level of detail meshes, I think we're going to be able to move into... Uh, Retro Seated says, holy god, that ANSYS version is so much better than this bullshit student version. Are you an engineer or just messing around? So I am an engineer. I'm a, uh, getting my PhD in aerospace engineering. And uh, I'm actually using the academic version, but uh, there's a good chance that our schools have different license. And I was able to use more of my CPUs and have a little bit more geometry than perhaps you're able to have on your student's license. But yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, that version of the license, you just kind of need to know how to work with it. Because even if you only have 2 million elements limited in the student model, then you can you can still do a lot of work with that. You just need to make sure that each one of your elements is, uh, is doing what you need and doing work for you, really. Make sure you don't have any waste elements. Green Machine says, it looks as if the model surface was just a profile of the main fuselage with scoops in the engine model. If, there aren't, if they aren't included, is it even feasible for to try for the wings and control mustache crosses out uh, airfoil. Yeah, it, it is feasible and it was a, just a 2D model. Um, the reason being is that, like I said before, the the 3D geometry just was t way too messy to try to to try to work with. And I, I did spend a, a majority of my time 
uh, you know, that two months was trying to figure out how to do a 3D model because that's really what I want to work to. And the low level of detail models will help me do that uh, eventually. But for this one, yeah, I wasn't able to, which was kind of sad because I think the wings are going to be a big part, uh, especially with how the M50 performs in turns. Icebone had a similar question as before with the hollow view model. And yeah, it would be it would be more accurate, especially with uh, the 3D geometry. Wesley Rich and Spicy Indian both noticed the uh, M50 in the background that was 3D printed. And yeah, it is 3D printed. And I did do that myself uh, last Christmas when I was over in California. Uh, visiting some of my relatives there was a 3d printer there and I kind of I fixed it up because <laughs> it was broken and uh, I started printing stuff and of course the first thing I printed was the M50 so I originally did a, um, a kind of pared down smaller geometry one and then the the white one there is a set my second attempt that was a second everything second thing I ever printed with a 3d printer and I'm looking forward to printing more stuff I'm gonna try to get this guy real quick there we go. All right, next question. Guy Z says he wants to see a caterpillar. Well, uh, good news. I'm going to try to do... Uh-oh, what's going on? My ship broke? Well, if it, didn't, it wasn't then, it is now. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of ships. As many as I can get done, uh, I want to do. And I'm not sure why I've lost control here. Smashbug wants to know, uh, I'd be curious to learn how much, how much atmospheric flight could affect a ship of this design and if the thrusters will still be able to maintain the ship enough for stable flight, especially around turns at high speeds. Those vortexes popping up look like they could be some trouble. Um, so that's a good point. The model that I ran was a pressure simulation, not a mass simulation. And so, you know, you saw the... The, the in the simulation the velocity of the of the exhaust from the thruster was kind of getting warped up in those vortexes you know, that doesn't really mean that much um, we'd be able to tell a lot better through a mass based simulation than a pressure based simulation um, but those are a little bit harder to do my guess is that most of the ships in star citizen uh, their thrusters are ridiculously overpowered because you know you're making 300 meter per second differences in your uh in your navigation with just you know your top or bottom thrusters i don't, I don't think they would have any problem uh taking care of any sort of aerodynamic instabilities but uh, that's to be seen and especially when we get into the uh, 3d models we're going to be able to tell that a lot better and uh, so that's about it for the Q&A. Uh, there was a whole bunch of comments on uh, just explaining the simulation in layman's terms. So we're going to get into that now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the simulation portion of this video where I'm going to try to explain everything as quickly as I can and get to all the important stuff. The first take of this video was 30 minutes long. This portion of the video is 30 minutes long. So I'm really going to try to speed things up here. So important things to note: We have green here. We have green here. This green corresponds to 280 meters per second. That is the maximum speed of the M50. All of this being green tells you that all of this is going 280 meters per second with respect to the M50. We see a lot of blue in here. That means we're getting drag. We see these alternating colors here. That means we have vortexes. We see a darker green out front, meaning that we have a drag zone here, but it's not as substantial as the drag zone back here. We have some interesting stuff going on in here, which we'll take a closer look at. The vortexes are forming because we have asymmetry between the top side of the M50 and the bottom side of the M50. Air has to move faster over the top side than it does the bottom side. The faster moving air at the top, faster moving air at the top, and the slower air, the faster moving air at the top and the slower moving air at the bottom mix, causing vortexes. Here we have a very good picture of exactly what's happening. These streamlines tell you if you were a particle, you would take this path through the simulation. This blue zone in here tells you that we have a negative velocity, so there's a vortex occurring here, vortex occurring here, vortex occurring here. This dark blue section here tells you that there's another vortex going on. And interesting to note, this is a location where I did not include an intake that I now think I probably should have had because if we have zero velocity or negative velocity here, we're going to have a high pressure, which is good for intakes. We're going to talk more about this in this in just a second. So one thing I want to talk about here is the Mach number that I ran this out. The Mach number I ran it at was 1.2. I think this is a good number to run at because you're going to be using shields as your hypersonic coming in through atmospheric reentry. Normally, atmospheric reentry happens at like Mach 20, which is just like, whoa, God, that's fast. So you would burn up if you didn't have any ablators 
In this case, we have shields. So let's turn on the shields, enjoy the cruise down to near sonic speeds, and then eventually it's not gonna be worthwhile to have the shields on, or perhaps there's some funky thing going on with the atmosphere where if you kept your shields on in the atmosphere, then you would you know, turn everything to ozone, which would be Australia. So let's not do that. Let's not be Australia. Let's be America. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Moving on. So we're gonna run this at Mach 1.2 and that's going to be pretty good and i think pretty realistic so let's just take a moment to respect how beautiful this looks because i got shivers the first time i ran it and uh, i'm just a huge nerd what we're seeing here is a shock wave a shock wave and a shock wave there's three different shocks happening here every time you can tell there's a shock because you have this you know, brighter color moving to a cooler color or a hotter color moving to a cooler color this defined color change here tells you that you're having your supersonic velocity coming in, you have a shock wave, and then it immediately decelerates to a subsonic value in most cases. Intakes here, here, and here, all of these intakes during this simulation were turned off. We have a lot of acceleration going on here, which is because we have a 2D model, and this 2D model is telling the mass coming in here that it needs to get here, and because this area is smaller than this area, it has to speed up to get there. It's the same way a diverging nozzle works. So I think this is really interesting. And then we're also having a shock here at the nozzle, which is just really cool. So we have a high pressure zone here, high pressure zone here, and a high pressure zone down here. And I say high pressure because the velocity is zero. And you can either have high velocity, low pressure, or low velocity, high pressure. This area down here is due to the landing struts, and it's causing a lot of problems. So it would make this aerospace engineer very happy if you removed this or smoothed it out, and then this bottom intake down here really doesn't do much at all for the M50. I think it would be much better off if it was smoothed out down here, even if it has a little mass. You could perhaps put some cooling for the engine. I'm not sure, but this is not very aerodynamic in here. And this jump here, you never want to see that. And it might just be because I did a 2D profile. And by the way, this is a 2D model, so not, we're not modeling wings. And I do think Modeling this in 3D is absolutely necessary to collect some of the interesting resistance numbers that I had one person ask about in the comments for perhaps modeling these ships with correct aerodynamic values. The only thing stopping me from doing 3D modeling right now is because I don't have access to low level of detail models. If you are from CIG, I've already, I've already emailed Chris about this. He never got back to me. I don't hold it against him. I love Chris and I love uh, CR as well. Um, but if you if you give me the lowest level of detail models, I can do I can do 3D simulations on them. Or if uh, one of you citizens out there knows how to extract these models, I'd love to do some simulations on them. It's just that the hollow view stuff has way too many triangles and it's not a very good mesh and there's lots of holes in it and stuff. So I'm really excited about the low level of detail work that Star Citizen Cloud Imperium Games is doing. I love your work. I love the game. Um, I'm going to start fanboying now. Patches on up here and all these intakes are closed during this run. There's some really interesting phenomena going in here. I'm not sure exactly what's causing that. I think it's a series of vortexes. But this whole area right here, if there was, if I had included that other intake, I think it's really cleared up a lot. Again, we're not running exhaust here. We're not running the engines in these case. So we have a lot of drag happening right behind it. This is a pressure simulation. We can see that we have a lot of pressure right here at the windshield and at the nose tip. This would be helped if we had some sort of geometry fold out and turn the nose tip into more of a blunt nose than the mustache it currently has. High pressure here at the upper intake is good if the intake was on, but at supersonic speeds, it's kind of bad to have this here. Perhaps another sort of geometry to fold up, a flap here that could fold up and close off this geometry, or perhaps everything back here. But that's a lot to ask. I think it looks really cool the way it is. We see that there's some low pressure down here. It's not negative pressure because this is gauge pressure. So this is with respect to atmospheric and atmospheric pressure is 101250 pascals, I believe. So this isn't actually negative. This is just telling us that it's below atmospheric pressure, or one Earth atmosphere. It's below one Earth atmosphere. A little closer up here, we can really see that we're having a lot of pressures here. This is roughly four Earth atmospheres right here and roughly four here, perhaps three and four Earth atmospheres. You'd want to make sure that you reinforce this part of the ship quite a bit. There's going to be a large hinge moment here wanting to flip this thing back because you have a lot of pressure in here, but not too much even at supersonic speed, so not horrible. And uh, this negative pressure is going to want to collapse this horizontal stabilizer, so you'd want to make sure that you would reinforce 
the bars that are going to connect it to the M50 so it doesn't just pancake in. Once again, uh, I'd love to. Once again, I'd love to just remove this and you know add that intake, but it's looking pretty good. So here we are in the 45 degrees angle of attack. Now I need to mention that 45 degrees angle of attack is not normal in most planes and spaceships don't assume a 45 degree angle of attack during any part of their normal flight regime, unless you're like a fighter pilot. And I know there's gonna be some people being like, oh, I did that in the military all the time. Well, you know, good for you, that's awesome. And I'd love to see some GoPro footage of that, but you're not gonna be maintaining this for very long. This is a maneuver you might only do for a couple seconds because you're gonna have so much force on this part of your plane that you're gonna start going straight really soon. So do I think this is a problem? Yeah, kind of, but it's not gonna be a problem for you or the airplane. It's just a problem with this sort of flight mode and you're not gonna maintain it for very long. So it's not a big deal, but it's really pretty to look at. A lot of drag happening up here, so it might be wanting to flip over its center of mass wherever that's located, but without a 3D model or accurate location of center of mass, we can't really make that determination just yet. So here we are with the velocity at 45 degrees. We can see that there's a lot of flow trying to speed up over the top here. Uh, we can see that our we can see that our exhaust is also at this kind of max velocity. And don't be alarmed when you see something like this occur. We're just we're just looking at the velocity. So the exhaust might still be straight. It'll probably be bent up a little bit just because you're having all this incoming flow, but it's not going to be wrapping up. I don't see any direct problems with this other than we'd probably have a lot of heating in the nose here and there's not a lot of material to sink up all that heat. So there'd be significant heating in the nose, significant heating at these bottom fins. And then, the, and then the trailing edge of this engine would also have a lot of heating. This is a good representation of the drag you'd have. The, once again, the engine's not on here, and this is just a 2D model. So in a 3D model, we would have additional shock waves coming off of the wings and the vertical stabilizers, which would have some interesting effects up here and also greatly affect the drag and performance. So yeah, really looking forward to those low level of detail models. I'm just going to keep saying it until someone gives them to me. So this is a, a great representation of those Prandtl Mayer waves down here where we have flow speeding up and then we have a shock formed right here at the bottom mustache. So you might be burning your mustache off here. Other than that, looks pretty good. This segment of the video where I'll be talking about the results will be included in all future videos. If you enjoyed this, please let me know by subscribing or visiting my Patreon. And I look forward to making more videos in the future. If you have any questions about the results I showed today or perhaps results I did not talk about, do mention those in the comments. I love talking to you guys there. I really appreciate all your support. If you know someone who would like this video, go ahead and share it to them. You'll notice I don't have that many subscribers right now. I'm really trying to build up my channel. So the more people we can share with, the larger we can grow the channel, and the more cool stuff we can do together. So I'm really looking forward to that. Until then, I'm Swiss Milk signing out. See you guys later.